Maga sa inyong lahat at welcome sa ating God's Word for Today devotional. Dito na tayo sa John chapter 17 at the whole chapter is about the priestly prayer of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ito yung prayer ni Panos Kristo talaga. Ang the Lord's Prayer na ating uh, commonly um, popularly known ay hindi yun prayer na talagang para kay na pinipili ni Panginoon Kristo. Ito yun ay the disciples prayer yun. Tinuturo ni Panginoon Kristo pa, paano ang kanya mga kanakan, mga disciples niya ay paano magpray. Pero dito talaga ang tinatawag natin the true prayer of the Lord Jesus Christ. At ang unang apat na bersikulo ay mabasa natin that he claimed here that he has glorified the Father. Now let me read that portion, John 17, verses 1 to 4 for today. Nang masabi na ni Jesus ang mga bagay na to, tumingala siya sa langit at sinabi, Ama, dumating na ang uras, lolhatiin mo ang iyong anak, upang lolhatiin ka ng anak. Yamang binigyan mo siya ng otoridad sa lahat ng laman upang bigyan niya ng buhay na walang hanggan ang lahat ng ibinigay mo sa kanya. At ito ang buhay na walang hanggan, na ikaw ay makilala nila na iisang Diyos na tunay at si Yesu Kristo na iyong sinugo. Niluwalhati kita sa lupa sa pagtatapos ko ng gawaing binigay mo sa akin. At ngayon, Ama, luwalhatiin mo ako sa iyong harapan ng kaluwalhati ang aking tinaglay sa harapan mo bago nagkaroon ng sandibutan. I have glorified you on earth. What a claim for somebody who was successful to his task. After explaining more about the coming of the Holy Spirit to his disciples and his looming persecution, pagkatapos ng uh, kanyang crucifixion or kanyang suffering, si Panginoos Kristo ay nag-umpisa na, na mag-pray. Jesus has submitted to the timeline given him by God the Father in his earthly ministry. Yun po ang ating makikita sa buhay ni Panayong Sokristo. Simulat siya po ay napakilala in his earthly ministry. Jesus has expressed here his patience until this very hour. Hindi siya nagpadala ng tukso kung ano man na mga tukso sa mundo because he was really faithful to fulfill the task given to him. The ultimate purpose for Jesus was to um, die at the cross, to be crucified as a sacrifice for our sins, for the glory of the Father. So, ang mga lahat ng mga so that he will display his power untimely or immaturely or prematurely. Ay hindi niya ginawa yun. So many times he was pressed by the crowd to show his power. Either in the wrong way or at the wrong time, he did not do it. He was, he was um, patient that he did not con control the urgings of the people or hindi siya nagpadala sa mga urging sa mga tao that he will become their king. He managed how uh, to react when people should proclaim him as their king. And even sa panahon na siya po huliin, he was, he was so patient and calm to say that my time has come. The hour has come. I will be delivered to the enemies. In other words, simula pa sa umpisa sa pagpikilala ni Panginoon Kristo that he was the Messiah. Sa kanyang public ministry, he was always subservient to the Father's will. Wala siyang ginagawa, wala siyang mga desisyon o mga reaction o response na hindi po sang ayon 
sa kalooban ng Panginoon because he was so determined to follow God's will. Ang isang katat- isang purpose ay ginawa ni Panginoon Kristo that is to bring glory to God with his sacrifice in acting the means of salvation by grace through faith. Ito lamang ang paraan that man can be reconciled to God. There is no other way. Now, some people will say that there are, there are many ways to go to heaven or there, there are many ways to, to reconcile to God. But the Bible tells us that there is only one way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Now, that is a very exclusive claim. Wala na pong iba. That's why he was so determined that uh, he is going to fulfill this to the best that he can without serving to either to the right or to the left because that is the only purpose that can provide sa salvation ng mga makasalanan katulad sa atin. He offered eternal life to all and he said here that ang lahat na ibinibigay ng Panginoong Ama ay hindi niya sinayang. All of them ay napara, napapunta sa kanya. You know, itong katotohanan, we, we can find also in John 6 verse 37 that makakilala tayo ng Panginoon, makakilala tayo ng ating tagapagligtas si Panos Kristo because we are gifts from the Father to Him. He wants us to know when in fact ito yung sinabi niya sa verse 3 that that they might know thee, that the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you sent. So yun ang layunin ni Panos Kristo na ang lahat ng tao ay makakilala ng Ama that He is the only true God. And this knowledge comes only by true repentance and genuine faith. Sabi po sa Ephesians 2 verse 8 that ang ating kaligtasan ay pa sa pamagitan lamang ng panampalataya by grace through faith, not of our works, lest any man should boast. So Jesus was so faithful. He was so determined that anong kahirapan sa cross, ano po yung um, mga... Um, ano po ka, brutal and violent his death would be but he was so determined to follow it because he was so faithful in obeying God's will so here in this prayer he claimed that I glorified you on earth because Jesus has indicated that he's now finished with the work he was tasked to do by this time that he prayed this might seem surprising given na hindi pa siya nag endure ng death during this time. This implies na ang kanyang determination talaga to endure the cross was undeterred. He was so sure about it, though how difficult it was. Ang kanyang papagkumbaba indeed became the basis of his request for exaltation. I have glorified the honor because I finished the work that you gave me to do. Yung napagkumbaba si Panginoon Kristo naging sakripisyo sa cross because he was obedient to the Father's will. At uh, kanyang hiningi that he would be glorified or exalted with the glory before the world existed. So it, is, it, does, it does mean that Jesus has his glory that is eternal in existence, just like God the Father. At ito po yung nag-affirm na si Panginoon Kristo ay hindi lang po tao, but He is the second person of the Trinity. So, Jesus does not mean Jesus sacrificed at the cross and He became man to sacrifice at the cross does not mean that nawala yung besa ng kanyang pagkatiyos. When in fact, ang kanyang function as the second person of the Trinity is to become man in order to sacrifice for our sins. But ang kanyang pagkadyos ay hindi nawala. You know, 
because he chose to be a servant. Sabi po sa Philippians chapter 2, he emptied himself. And the word emptied himself means that he na, na, natakpan ang kanyang mga, ang kanyang attributes pagka Diyos at that moment na naging servant siya by choice. You know, when a king ay pumili siya na maging isang peasant, isang servant, bumaba siya sa kanyang truno at saka nagsuot siya ng nagbihis siya ng isang suot ng isang alipin it does not reduce his king his, his, his status as a king only that he's being a servant now his function parang hindi siya maka-exercise lamang ng some of his art, attributes and his power because he chose to become a servant just like the Lord Jesus Christ. When he became man, he humbled himself and he was even branded as a criminal to die at the cross. He was not able to exercise his being a God because he chose during that moment to become a man. But he is also a God. Now this mystery and this truth is not easy to grasp. But yun po ang makikita natin sa Biblia na si Panus Gusto ay sinto por sinto na Diyos na naging tao. And He sacrificed at the cross. And by that, He obeyed the Father. He was able to finish the task that He was tasked to do. What uh, um, an act of humility. Kaya nga sa Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 to 11, in exalted ng Panginoon, he was given a name above every name. That lahat dito sa lupa, under sa lupa, and even in heaven, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord, and every knee shall, shall bow. So, mga kapatid, mga kaibigan, let's marvel at this claim of the Lord Jesus Christ. I have finished the work that you have given me to do. Ang ating kaligtasan is the finished task is done. It is finished. Jesus will be exalted. Sana po maging halimbawa si Kwanus Kristo sa atin by His grace, by His power, we also will be able to finish the task. Sana po ano ang nagpisa ng Panginoon sa atin ay matapos din. Yun ang pangako ng Panginoon sa atin, hindi ba? Sa Philippians 1 verse 6, being confident of this very thing, that he who had begun a good work in you will finish it until the day of Christ. Yes, He is going to finish what He has started in you and in me. And thank you that we are going to thank the Lord for what He did because we can be assured that He who is our God will help us through, through the power of the Holy Spirit. So, napakaganda po na claim ni Panginoos Kristo dito. A cry of victory, a claim of triumph. I have glorified thee on earth. And yun po ang pursuit din natin na may we will be able to see sa badang uli, we have glorified God on earth. Sana po na ang ating maybe ang ating pag-umpisa sa ating Christian life will be uh, is rough. Pero Let's finish this with 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 commitment na tapusin natin ito by the grace of God that we will be able to say indeed Lord I have done what I ought to do what you called me to do I finish it by your grace and mercy of course it is atin kundi sa biyaya at sa kapangyarihan ng banal na espiritu what um reminder sa ating lahat today. Manalangin tayo. Panginoon, salamat po for this victory cry of the Lord Jesus Christ. I have glorified you on earth. At sana po, Panginoon, ay ang kanyang victory ay maging encouragement sa amin, Lord, that ang aming ginagawa, ang aming mga buhay dito sa mundo is is assured na Although mahirap, although it's not smooth, may mga handlang, but at the end of the day, we will be victorious. Thank God for the victory in Christ. We are more than conquerors in Him, in Christ. 
So salamat ko Panginoon today. May this truth will reverberate in our heart. Not only for today, but every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.